underground noise. With Lee Harrison, drummer from Monstrosity. What's up? How's it going today, Lee? Good, good. Cool. Being busy, man. That's the way to do it. How's this tour been so far for you? Good. Definitely better, uh, a little better organized than the previous ones. We got a lot more time to get ready. You know, we started planning this six months in advance, so had a little more lead time. And, uh, you know, just so far so good. You know, it's still early, you know, first week, basically wrapping right up the first week of the tour. And uh, we had a good show the other night in Philly with uh, DSI's Vital Remains. Um, that was uh, like a wrestling arena type thing. It was cool. Had some vendors out there and the, the, uh, good stage. Good, good little thing going on. Uh, rally in North Carolina was pretty cool. It was like that, a good stage. Uh, got to meet one of the guys from the professor. Got to see their jam room and listen to some of their new material and stuff. And Confessor's an old band. It was on Earache back in like early 90s. They're always a killer. A little different, not quite death metal, but the drummer's amazing. I always worship him. So it's cool to be able to sit behind his kit and check it out. Yeah, that's just a personal. That's all hey, whatever. Right? What are some of your biggest influences? Uh, it just depends on the time. If you want to go back all the way, you know, like some of the 70s stuff going on, Cheap Trick, uh, Ted Nugent, you know, Black Sabbath, you know, kind of the pre, pre 80s metal, you know. What I mean? And then when like 80s came along, you know, I made the threes, that kind of thing. Queens Reich, you know, more the dress, a little more progressive, and then. The Thrash thing, Metallica, Slayer, Testament. Uh, and then about that time is when you know I started doing my own band and stuff. So I kind of became a little more focused on what you know, what I was doing, listening to music that I'd written and recorded and things like that, and not kind of tuning out some of the you know, whatever the bands that are going on at the moment. So. Who, are you, who are you listening to currently? Um, like I said, more, you know, a lot of stuff that I'm working on, um, doing a project at Midnight from Crimson Glory, so I've been listening to that a lot, just because I've been recording it, it's been hours and hours and hours, and hours and but, uh, usually whatever project I'm working on is what I'm listening to, or most of it, and then, you know, I listen to, I still listen to death metal, certain bands I like, and, you know, a lot of the newer stuff kind of tends to not really, you know, Blue you know, it's not what I'm into, but then again, there's some new bands that are killer, you know, these young kids out there, you know, out there, you know, when I was younger, Slayer was fast, you know, now it's like these guys just come out of nowhere and it's just like blazing all day long, you know, fast as hell, and, you know, there's going to be that 16-year-old kid who listens to that, and that's like, you know, he's going to take it to another level, you know, and just 10 years from now, where they're going to be, you know, they're going to be like levitating, <laughs> Here's a question you don't hear very often. What comes to your mind when you heard the word emo? Emo? Take a goofy haircut and eyeliner and tight pants, maybe. <laughs> Those pagans don't know how to create music anymore. Not very death metal, but you know, whatever. Another world. I agree. I'll ask a question. What was your first reaction like when uh, you found out Webster asked, you know, George to join Corpse? He called me. Uh, he said, uh, he said Cannibal asked me to join, and I told him I'd do it. Okay, cool. We were like six days before Millennium, um, so we just kind of had to, you know, it was like a decision of whether, you know, well, gee, what do we do? You know, we spent this. It's been four years basically since Imperial Doom and we spent a lot of time writing and working and you know, keeping the band going through those times. You know, we, we had problems with nuclear blasts at the time and we kind of battled through that. We were just about to, you know, come out the other side when that happened. So uh, it was kind of like a one of those things you just had to think about, you know, do we want, you know, how do we want to do this? We were going to get a, go ahead and just get another singer right then and there, but ultimately the guys, that, you know, it wasn't a case that we could just have somebody walk in and do what, what needed to be done. So George agreed to, you know, we had two shows we had to finish up, Canada, and did one more, I forget which one it was, but Canada was one of them for sure. And then he did 
more as like, you know, finish his obligations to what he had agreed to do with us, you know. And he agreed to do the album with Ali was hanging. And, you know, he, we were almost going to use it for spiritual apocalypse just because, you know, Avery was pretty much out of gas at that point and uh, it's time to move on. And, um, we had talked about it with George, but it's just, you know, he's so busy with Pat's possession, Cannibal Corpse, and that whole thing. He's got his family now. You know, I mean, not that he, you know, not that he couldn't do it or anything, but I just, I'm just glad it worked out the way it did. We got somebody who was, you know, in the band, that's solid, that could dedicate themselves a little more to the band. Mm -hmm. So, in that respect, it worked out for the best. And to, to, come, to 